As you may know, coronavirus has affected us in many different ways. This includes in terms of the economy, society, and the environment. In the age of the internet, there is an influx of information that is given to us. It is hard to understand what is real and what is fake. It is important sometimes to take a step back and analyze the different ways we can take the information in in a reliable and efficient way. Before we begin, I want to talk a little bit about my website, The Beauty in the Unexplainable. This website provides insight onto how I like to answer the questions that are arising as a result of the coronavirus. This mind map here shows two main ideas of my essay, science versus soul. These are two different mediums in literature that can be used through visualization and transmemberment to understand more about each type of literature. Visualization will be used in this video seeing as coronavirus is a scientific concept and through the characteristics of visualization we can better understand the effects of coronavirus, the implications, and how we can work as a society to better the negatives that come with the virus. Before applying visualization to better understand the coronavirus, it is first important to define it. I define visualization as the conceptualization of an idea through images and visual stimuli. In today's internet age, gigabytes of information are at our fingertips. It is difficult to understand what type of information we must consider true and what we must consider false. Furthermore, even if we do find these bits of information to be true, how do we interpret them so that they intertwine with our daily lives and how do we know to what extent they concern us? All of these are very important questions that visualization allows us to answer. In the first example, we have the risk index for traveling to countries that have been affected by the coronavirus. Seeing this table, it is very hard to understand. There's a lot of numbers and it's very easy to be overwhelmed with the data. However, in this graphic published by researchers at Harvard University, we can see the danger zones marked by coronavirus cases near international airports. This allows us to see and have a better sense of where the virus has spread to. This allows public officials and governments to create a plan of action, which can include shutting down flights to areas and creating more direct flights to avoid some airports that have higher coronavirus cases in the vicinity. By transforming the numbers and figures into a visual, we can better understand and see the connection between the countries and how coronavirus can affect the individuals of people in major cities. Another example we can take a look at is how the government tracked the coronavirus in Washington. Washington was one of the first states to have a case of coronavirus, and it was the first to declare emergency as well as the first to shut down schools in the state. This table shows the amount of coronavirus cases per county in the state of Washington. Once again, it is very hard to understand as we do not know the geographical locations of some of these figures and how they relate to the coronavirus as a whole in terms of the economy, demographics, and other variables. However, by taking a look at this figure over here, we can clearly see that the coronavirus cases are located majority in the King and Thurston counties, which resides both Seattle residents and Olympia residents, the two most populated cities in Washington. From this figure, we can conclude that coronavirus spreads faster and with more aggression in populations where there is a dense concentration of people. The interpretation of this figure allowed the government to contact major companies such as Amazon and Microsoft, which are both stationed in Seattle, to tell their employees to work at home to ease the public transportation and the people that are on the streets. As a result of this precaution that was taken so early in the coronavirus pandemic in Washington, the state was able to keep coronavirus cases at a minimum and still to this day contain less than 100 deaths. In today's age, where information is so plentiful, visualization allows people to interpret the information that they receive and transform it into something useful and effective for the better of society. Thank you very much.